Never was a story a more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Oh, rotten tomatoes is your thing. Yes. I love your sight. Oh, good. Everything you do is fresh. Oh. It truly is. I was looking Gosford Park and that you wrote, and then uh, we just branched into television and Downton Abbey, all fresh. Oh, that's so nice to hear. Well, making it fresh again, I suppose, is one of the big tasks when you take on one of these things. Sure, fourth season. Yes, we did well with our first showing in, in London on Sunday. I'm really pleased about that, that's actually. That's what I heard. Because it means we've gone beyond the death of Matthew. We can now all accept it and move on. But can Mary? It still hurts a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan's got his second movie coming out any day now, so we don't have to feel too sorry. It's fine. Every time that someone dies on screen and then I get to see him in real life, it's always a shock. <laughs> like, <laughs> I realize how seriously I take these things. Oh, sure. You know, and, and so people know them better than I do, you know. They write, they say, Mrs. Patmore would never have said that. <laughs> and I think, well, I invented her. She says what I say. <laughs> That's, oh. that's a ballsy move. I know, you know, I agree. It really is. Well, I mean, and you had the same challenge with Romeo and Juliet. The classic tale, but this is this generation's version. Not as many boobs as in the Zeffirelli version. No, no, <laughs> with fewer boobs. I mean, our, our Juliet is really effectively the same age as Shakespeare conceived her. I mean, you know, in the play she's 12. Ours is 15, but in 1590, right. 12 is pretty well equivalent to our 15 because they were dying at 45. Right, exactly. So the whole thing was differently um, molded. And I, I think it makes a tremendous difference to have a genuinely young Juliet. When they're really so young and so fresh and so innocent. And, and so, so innocent. And, and her choices are made from innocence. Mm -hmm. And you see that in good innocence, not stupid innocence. Right. But not silly naivety, but good innocence. Pure of heart. And it, I, I think, you know, she breaks your heart in that, really. She does. Oh, and then adorned in these amazing masks and the incredible costumes. I think uh, Nadia has a wonderful visual imagination, as you would imagine, because that's part of how she makes her living. Uh -huh. Uh, and so that side of it was very, very important to her. But also with Carlo and Milena, you know, this is the advantage of having Italians responsible for the design team because the fact Gorgeous. is, you know, Bella Figura is everything. And mm -hmm. the visual appearance of Italian films is their great strength. So when we first arrived at Cinecittà, which in itself was romantic enough to go mm. to that studio haunted by the ghosts of all these giants of my youth, uh, and then to go into the costume department and see these men and women working on these extraordinarily beautiful mm. costumes. The moon costume of Juliet at the ball, you know, that blue dress. Stunning. God, it's, I mean, it's a I... real work of art. I hope some museum of cinema or something takes the costumes and keeps them rather than just carving them up for some, you know, fancy dress part. Give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, cut him out in little stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night.